Well, after a lovely session of playing Wild Goose Chase, the Spark Station 5 is now fixing errors that are in the this is the EXT2 file system on the main hard drive. <clears throat> hooked up SunType 5C, hooked up a 13W3 uh, to VGA adapter, and this Acer monitor, which has a blue vertical bar going down half the screen almost, is the only monitor that I had on hand within arm's reach that supported sync on green, or so it seemed. As you can see, one of the fun things about Linux on Spark is you've got this wonderful little, uh, oh, you can barely see him, but you got this little, uh, fun little character here. Fun penguin with the, uh, looks like a Solaris logo in the middle of it, sort of. But not really. It's just a penguin with the sun. There you go. It's a penguin with the sun on the, on its stomach. And, uh, that's pretty much all there is to do there. I'm not sure if that means that the uh, clock on the uh, SCSI bus is 40 megahertz or not, but I do know that the uh, S bus is overclocked on this, and that does mean that the SCSI hard drive, which can definitely take that particular uh, amount of stuff, oh, sorry, that amount of speed, is perfectly fine to use on it, whereas older SCSI drives did not. You know, I had to really actually do some looking up of stuff here since it's been a while since I uh, had to do anything with the IDP ROM and any of my uh, machines. So I'm going to bring over this. Here's my uh, WinBook TW800 and uh, just uh, followed your guide and I reset the NVRAM. But this obviously means that the 22-year-old NVRAM battery has finally died. So, you're now going to restart, and I will take you through the wonderful journey of watching this reboot. There we go. Let's, uh, adjust that again. There we go. Oops. Stop A. Boot. Disk. One. Enter. has a CG6, so that's the icon you get. There's all the information about this machine, which I'm going to need in the future. So for further reference, there we go, and now we've just uh, dropped into Linux. It has found my hard drive and the CD-ROM drive, which is the original, uh, and original, I think it's a 1X or a 2X CD-ROM drive for these systems. I'll be showing that in a second when I uh, get up from the floor here. Oh. UDEV does not start, which is absolutely fine, because UDEV will not run properly on an SBUS system of this age, it seems. So I am perfectly fine with that. EXT3, no journal on file system SD8-2. I'm going to have to look into that. I need to get a journal set up on this particular hard drive, because having it re- no, just fix uh, the XT2 file system every time it dies is a bad thing. Oh, it's bad. Yep, clean, setting system clock, January 1st, 1968. Oh, I'm, I'm in the, 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 the past with this, yeah. Oh. So this should be resetting itself and then bringing up the network interface. Yep, TPE. It says carrier lost because it is um, AUI first and twisted pair next. <coughs> I gotta install the set font utility to use other fonts other than this one, which is perfectly fine because I'm never going to. Come on. Now, will NTP8 run? Some X socket directory stuff happening there, but that's just for uh, something that was installed, not actually for it. Don't think so, at least. Yep. There's that. 
NTP date. Yes. We did have an offset of zero zero one three four four. Sorry, point zero zero one three four four six. So it did at one point did get an, an NTP date. So it sets it, then it sets it again. Are we done doing this? Nope, apparently not. But yeah, there's the uh, system information. I did have to edit this uh, the um, Linux logo script a little bit to get it to see the uh, spark properly, but hey. Good, this is a uh, Fujitsu MB86904 MicroSpark 2 running at 110 megahertz, which is the fastest one. That was not a turbo spark, I think it was. What the hell, cat? fix myself here. So while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna just go up here and uh, yes, this, this is the original CD-ROM drive which you can barely see. Nothing all too special about it except that it's a CD-ROM drive from like 1994 in this particular piece of a system. Like that. So, um, only other thing that's changed up here is, uh, this, uh, Atom box up here, which is an MSI Winbox MS9A25, I think it is, which is just an Atom N270 with a couple of gigabit Ethernet jacks in the back, Intel-based, and I popped a heatsink on top to keep the case cool, because the Atom and the 945 all sync to case, and it actually does a pretty good job, especially if I have the XI3 sitting here blowing a little bit of air on it, then it keeps it pretty nice and uh, lukewarm. So, that, that's about it. There's not much else happening here, so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is. I think we've got a... Either it uh, froze or something else is happening, but that's about all I'm going to show here, because uh, aside from uh, needing to figure out what's going on here and try to SSH into the box, I have to go to the bathroom. So, I'm going to pop this up on YouTube in a little bit, and uh, that's going to be it for this. Uh, anybody has any questions about the Spark Station 5 and uh, what it does and all that stuff, hey, send me a, send me a message, uh, send me a comment, and I'll try to make a couple more videos about it, because this is the first video I've made about it really in uh, about a year that voted just to it. Um, there's going to be another one when it comes time to replace the NVRAM battery, just like I did for the Ultra 10, except this one actually lasted for 22 years. Alright, so without further ado, I will be shutting the video down. Have a good one, guys. And just for gits and shiggles, here is me actually SSH'd into the machine, which has a fairly outdated kernel running on it, but if I type this in and I put in a date, it does see that today is indeed, oh, if it even freaking focuses, come on, it sees that it is Saturday, April 30th at 1am, 2016, yay! Alright, end of the video. Have a good one.